Hi, welcome to ADI Technical Training. I'm Matthew. In this video, we're going to look at the CanTech. We're looking at the KT1 standalone single door controller. In particular, we're looking at the, um, the PCB version, and we're going to be powering this one PoE. We will be connecting the HID signal reader to this uh, to this controller. Um, so the controller itself is PoE. It's standalone and it has a built-in web browser. So that means you have to browse into the device. The, um, the device has a static IP address of 192.168.1.2 and you can browse into it. Prior to starting, the controller needs registering. Now, there is a splash screen in the software to do that or if you prefer, well, the better way to do it is to go to the Caltech website and uh, register in advance. Okay, so we're on the splash screen there of the device, 192.168.1.2. So let's uh, let's go to the uh, the Caltech homepage, and in there we're going to get the, our registration code, our activation code. So Caltech.com. Log in or register and log in. Click on support. Register your product, and then click on the um, standalone registration. And in this in these fields, you simply populate your information: who you are, the country, what what device, and the serial number. You'll find the serial number on the front of the device. Um, also, it's on the splash screen. I'll show you that in a second. Populate information, copy the registration code, and then back to the to the home page. And here we go. So we can select our language, English in this case, and then you've got a bit of information such as the device itself, what, what's its name, you've got the firmware version, uh, MAC address, and the serial number. So you can cover the serial number if you like. If you want to go back to on the registration page, there's your serial number. It's also on the front of the device. Now we've done all that, we need to choose what are we going to do? Are we going to be doing this as standalone or is it part of EntryPass? So we're standalone. Activate your device. We will activate another way and simply paste our um, registration code in there because we've already got it in advance. So paste that in there and then click activate. That takes us to the start page. So let's start working on the product. We need to have a username and password for the installer and the username and password for, for admin um, to do basic administration work. So the installer, you know, in the installer menu, this is where you set the time and date, um, IP addresses, things like that, um, schedules. Um, so that's your lower, uh, sorry, your higher username and password. And then you'd have your user um, or administrator or operator. You could choose operator or well, as I'm going to do or you could use a person's name if you want whichever is easiest uh, and then create a password for them to log in with. Once that's done we will put the passwords in. Once that's done uh, let's click next. In the next window we can now specify the time and date. So first of all let's change the time to the English way and we can use the um, auto detect feature there and that will populate the time and date uh, from your PC. Uh, let's do that. Uh, enable British summertime. Click next. Now we need to specify a card format. I've set the, the signal read up to 26 bit, 26 bit weekend. So let's pick the um, 26 bit week and the first one we see. If it doesn't work, we can change it later on, but we'll stick with um, the sensor 26 bit. Click on that and then we will click next. Now we're on the doors page, so this is where you give the door a name. I'll, I'll just call it door one. And this is where you can also specify the input types. Has it got a door contact? Has it got a rex button input, an exit button input? Uh, click next. Uh, 
And now we've got the confirmation of how the device is set up and configured. Once we press save, it will download a, a config file. And that's just a backup, basically, of how you saved it. Um, you can save that if you want to program another device. Or it's a backup for the, if you ever need to reboot this particular machine. So that's saved. I'm using Firefox. In this case, Firefox will save my password from before. So now, um, if I click on save for the password. So now if I log in to the to the device, it asks me for my username and password. It's already saved. Let's log in. Okay, so here we are, blank screen. We're ready to go. So just a reminder with the, the KT1, it's a universal device. It reads many types, it accepts many types of reader. We're using the signal reader. Um, we're connecting on the electrical connections, uh, red, black for pos and neg, green, white for data one, data zero. We're going to use this reader as an enrollment reader as well. So it's worth considering that. How do you enroll tokens in? So here we are on the landing page. Let's have a look. Card holders, that's self explanatory, we'll come back to that later. Controller, um, that's the name of the device, so that's a controller. As I say, we set up a 26 bit Wii, and then in other videos, on, uh, we've set the reader to be 26 bit Wii and output. Um, the sensor uses uh, site code and then encrypt seed number, so that'll make a lot more sense later on. Um, all the information as usual, doors, well we already know doors, we gave it a name before door 1, are we doing anything special, not really, so we can leave it as it is, if it's the front door of uh, an office block, if you want to do it, unlock, you know from 9 in the morning uh, till half past 9, let everyone get in, um, so and there you go, you can do that, um, next will be your inputs, Put numbers. How do they behave? How do they behave? Um, so exit buttons, for instance, in the UK, all our exit buttons are in the normal condition are open. Um, are we using EOL? Well, I'm not in this video, but you know you can if you like. The um, if there's an alarm input, what does it activate? Um, if there's an alarm input, what does it activate? Relay one or relay two? Again, we're not. Not really doing that in this video. Relays. Um, this is you know if you're using this in a third party application. Um, sorry, if you're going to be using this with, um, if you're going to shunt out something when at certain times you can use it to do that. Schedules. These time zones basically. Holidays. If you want to create a holiday. Um, when certain access levels can't work, Christmas, Easter, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Um, actions, we won't cover that. Network, which is basically the uh, the IP address of the device. DHCP is enabled, that should turn that off. We'll disable that in this instance, um, just to make life easier for me. Um, and then, yes. and then admin settings, user, but and if you want to change your user and your password. So let's go back to card holders. And what we're going to do is add a card holder. So, so if we present the token to the reader, look in the event windows here. You can see access was de denied to this card holder. So let's call it um, Fob1. The card number, you can see the card number's over there. So let's type in that card number 000A. It's true hexadecimal, this. 02820. And it valid from today. Leave that as it is. As is. Expiration is fine. Uh, door one. When will it work? We'll always say always valid. Exit. Well, we've not put anything in yet. Um, it's going to be an RTE out in the basic installation, so we can leave that as it is. 
Um, and the options you're going to be tracing this, so it's got um, extended use, you know, using second relays, multi swipe, double authentication, no, uh, we've got a keypad, no, user's restriction, how many times is somebody allowed in, I'm not going to worry about that. So let's save that. Changes have been saved. Now, as you can see, very minimal input, I believe, if I present the token to the reader, we, um, we look in the uh, event windows here we should see a valid read there we go unlock by event and and there you go in, in a few seconds in a few minutes you have a, a working system installers rely on adi the adi projects and technical teams offer a pre-configuration service any project size from a single device or to a complex system any IP device can be configured from our central hub using our technical and projects teams. Having your device pre-configured will save engineers time on site. We can set your IP address, the gateways, and in addition, we'll make sure your device has the latest firmware on board. Simply get in touch with your ADI sales contact or email the projects team. Thanks very much for watching. All the products mentioned in this training video can be found on our website. Links are below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much.